Hello and welcome to a new tutorial. This is going to be an important lesson about slice counts. Now when I make a new IO box value advanced, I create a spread with only one slice in it. Now if I make another IO box value advanced and make the value something different than zero, and then I connect them both to the add sign, I will get one value at the output. Sounds logic, right? 0 plus 0 0.55 equals 0 0.55. Now let's use our inspector to make this IO box value advanced into a spread with two slices. So first I change the slice count mode to calls rows pages, and then I change the rows count to two. Now I got two slices in my spread, but I'm adding a spread with only one slice, but the outcome is a spread with two slices. So when I combine two spreads or more, with different slice counts, this is a slice count of two, this is a slice count of one. The output, this is the output, will have the same slice count as the highest spread count. And in this case, two is the highest spread count. And this is what this tutorial is all about. So let me repeat myself. When I combine two or more spreads with different slice counts, the output will have the same slice count as the highest slice count. And with combining, I can mean many things. I can add two values together. But combining also means using different spreads with different slice counts for transforms, which I will show in a minute. Okay, let's change this spread into three slices. And let's change all the slices so we can see a bit more what is going on. And let's change this one. So what's happening here? Well, every slice, this spread, so this is three slices, gets added with the one slice from the first spread. Now, what would happen if I make this spread a slice count of two slices? So I select it, I go for calls rows pages, and I make the row count two, and then I change the numbers. I am now editing three slices and two slices, and the output will give me the highest slice count. So the output will give me three slices. Okay, what is happening inside the add node? It makes a slice count of input one and input two, an equal amount of slices. It does so by simply repeating all the values until it reaches the highest spread count. So it repeats the slices connected to input one until it has three slices. So what is happening here? The first slice and the first slice will be added together. The second slice and the second slice will be added together. And the first slice and the third slice will be added together. This works just the same as setting your IO box to calls rows pages and then increasing your rows count. You see what happened? I went from two slices to three slices, so, so the third slice is the same as the first slice. Understanding this behavior with highest spread counts and repeating slices, and then combining them is a crucial part of working with spreads. And this goes for every spread, not only values, but also for text strings or for textures and transforms. So just for fun, let's take a look at a very common problem new users always seem to have. I'm going to make a grid of quads, let's say a nice grid that is five wide and four high. So I first select all this and then hit the delete key. Okay, what do we need? We need a renderer. I select it and I hit Alt 2. We need a quad. And I make a transform node. Okay, let me lower the scale and the width because we're going to make a grid. Okay, now I make a linear spread for the x-axis. This one is for the width, so it's going to be 5. We're going to make it 5 wide. We're going to set the width to 2. I duplicate it, control D. And this one is going to be four because we make it five by four. So now I just connect it to the translate X and to the translate I. Okay, what happens now? We do not get a nice grid. We get this line and we only get five quads. Well, what happened is we only get as many quads as the highest spread count. 
and in this case the high spread count is 5. So we only get 5 quads. The spread for the y-axis was 4 slices, so it repeats the first slice to also make 5 slices for the transform. Ok, let me quickly show you how to fix this grid. We're going to need an extra node and that node is cross 2D. Cross two dimensions. And I simply connect the linear spread to x in and the other one to i in. And the output x to translate x and the output i to translate i. This node will give me all the possible combinations between the x and the y. As you can guess, there are only 20 ways to combine these. In the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use count and resample, so we can manually change the way that nodes are repeating spreads with lower spread counts. Thanks again for watching and see you all next time.